I want to mention a hadith or a conversation between Hudayf ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu and the Nabi alayhi salatu salam. It is a conversation I'm sure that many of us have read many a time or heard many a time. But I just want to reflect on how in this modern day, on the time that we are living in now, how things have changed. So Hudayf radiallahu anhu, he says, كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني The people they used to ask the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم about all goodness However I used to ask him about that what was to be considered evil out of fear that I would see that and may overcome me so the vast majority of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum would be asking the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam about that what would bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that was considered righteous. However, Hudayfa radiallahu an, and of course this was explained to us no doubt in the book of Allah jalla wa ala, what is, what goes against them, what is not pleasing to Allah wa ta'ala from shirk, from disobedience in all its forms, not that we were left not knowing what they were. But Hudayfa radiallahu anhu wanted further information of those things which were to be considered harmful to one's deen, in fear that you may live amongst it and that it may then impact you. So the vast majority of what people were asking about was righteousness. If we look in our time now, what is it that people are not necessarily asking about but that what they themselves are indulging in, maybe not saying anything. The vast majority of maybe what we are exposed to is evil, is wrongdoing. But the thing we should be fearful of is that we do not recognize that as being evil. Now, Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, on another occasion, the first hadith, of course, has a long conversation with the Prophet alayhi salam, in explaining that there were times of good and then there's times of evil and then good which will be tainted and then there will be evil again and then it will be the end of times. But that conversation is of course for another time. But Hudayfa radiallahu anhu is also asked in another narration, what do you see as the greatest fitna? What is the greatest tribulation that you see? He says that good and evil is presented to any one of you and that you are unable to distinguish between the two. Imagine a person is placed in front of two situations or more, but is unable to distinguish between that what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, there, be, there could be many reasons for that. It could be that person's ignorance, I don't know why or what is good, what is evil. So they may be, may be blameworthy for their lack of knowledge. It could also be a situation where, which, and subhanAllah, this particular topic is a very important topic for us to understand. And this khutbah is not an attempt to explain everything, but for us to reflect over the importance that every day Allah Jalla wa Ala gives us as a Muslim to be aware of what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best we know and that what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala wa huwa radin anna that he is pleased with us so imagine now that we are living and what we are exposed to that the truthful person is seen as the liar and the liar is seen as the truthful one now you may say well that's easy for me to distinguish what about if you have masses of people Masses of people and that information that you are exposing yourselves to, they are all saying the same thing. That what you see is kedib, is false, is batil. However, so many people are saying, no, what they're saying is the truth. This is the reality. Or an example, of course, you all well, well know that social media, what you're exposed to, you take a video. And the same video is used a hundred times in a hundred different ways. And that the information that is attached to that video, how they explain that video, is different. You've seen the video before. However, a video appears six months later, 
And there's another ta'liq, there's another piece of information that this video now, the causes and the reasons why this happened. All confusion. All confusion. That you saw at one time as truthful and now is being posed as false. It's not what you thought and vice versa. And this is exactly what our Nabi والسلام, told us that towards the end of times, a sadiq, the truthful one, would be seen as a kathib, as a liar. And the kathib would be seen as the sadiq. The liar would be seen as the truthful one. So the Muslim is fully aware of these situations. Now, we can categorize all of these tribulations into two simple categories for us to understand. You have shabuhat, doubts, and shahawat, these desirous matters. Doubtful matters and desirous matters. These shubuhat that come to you that appear to be a particular way but are not. What is the makharaj from that? What is the way of getting out of these shubuhat? Well, the Prophet ﷺ told us, Al-halal ubayyin wal-haram ubayyin. Halal is clear. Haram is clear. وَبَيْنَهُمَا أُمُورًا مُشْتَبِهَاتِ And between them are matters which are doubtful. They're not clear to you. What are you supposed to do? That who is fearful, who wants to protect themselves, they will stay away from those doubtful matters. You protect your deen and your irv. You protect your honor. You stay away from those doubtful matters. You don't engage with those doubtful matters, even though they are so easily accessible on social media, or what you see in the television, or whatever, even in the street. You access these fitan and tribulations which may cause doubt. Do not engage with that. Do not engage with these things. Protect yourself because you do not know how you may react in these times of confusion. And also these shahawat, these desirous matters. Of course, these desirous matters, they're all clear to us what Allah Taala made to us clear. Stay away from those. But we should, be realize, we should, be, we should realize that a shaitan may try to change the reality of what the haram is so it becomes something digestible for us changing the names of what is clearly haram but because it has a different name somehow it changes its reality well the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam said yashrabu nasa min ummati al khamra that there will be people who will drink alcohol from my ummah wa yusammunaha bi ghayri ismiha and that they will drink it, or what they are drinking is something by another name. Because it's given another name, somehow they have been deceived into falling into that. So the Muslim must be fully aware of all of these things. Remember Iblis. When he came to Adam alayhi salam, and we know that Allah ta'ala forbade Adam alayhi salam from eating the tree. Did Iblis simply say, eat from the tree, disobey Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala? No. Try to bring about some confusion. Eat from this tree. Maybe you will become like two angels, or you will become from those who are immortal. And Adam, alayhi salam, was deceived by such, by such an approach. And we know that Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, sent Adam, alayhi salam, and shaitan to this earth for us to live. The point being, a shahid is that Iblis came to deceive and to name things by the other than their reality. Who are most at risk from our communities in such matters where the world is changing so quickly? No doubt, it's our shabab, our youth. They may understand the world and for sure understand the world differently from us as parents. But is the parents' responsibility to do what? to educate our children about the realities of what they are being exposed to and not to allow them to be brought up or whatever tarbiyah that they are receiving from outside the home to be the primary, if you like, the primary essence of what is going to bring them up. The parent needs to be in place at the forefront in educating our next generation about how to break the world down in this simple way, if you like, in the way it was explained to us by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and, and, and Nabi alayhi salatu salam, to know about what are these fitan from the shubuhat, from the shahawat, from doubts and desirous matters, and how to stay away from them and not to engage with them. 
We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to guide us and our families and to protect us from a dalala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfir Allah li wa lakum min kulli dhan fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. All praise belongs to Allah jalla wa ala and may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon his final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said satukunu fitanun that there will be a time of tribulations al-qa'idu fiha khayrun min al-qa'im that the sitting person is in a better state than the one who is standing wal-qa'imu fiha khayrun min al-mashi and that the one who is standing is better than the one who is walking wal-mashi fiha wal-mashi fiha khayrun min al-sa'i and the one who is walking is better than the one who is running here the Prophet ﷺ is explaining that in times of fitan, the person who is, as understood from the hadith, who is not engaging and running towards the fitan, is the one who is in a better state. Very important principle for us to understand. The nature of, for unfortunately now for us, is to be drawn towards new things, interesting things, things which are new. Bearing in mind that the person is unable to distinguish quite possibly that what is good for them and that what is bad for them. As Hudayfa radiallahu anhu said, that's the greatest fitan, that the person is unable to distinguish that what they're engaged in is good for them or bad for them. They don't know. They just full-heartedly go into a situation and then halak. They're destroyed by it. Here the Prophet ﷺ is giving us a principle that these fitan, these tribulations which are full of confusion, to stay away from them, not to engage in them. Did you hear about the latest mood or the latest fashion, the latest trend? No, I don't know about it. And to be honest with you, the majority of them, I'm not interested. Why? Because I don't know how it will impact my heart, how it will impact my family. So you protect yourself. You remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told you. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara, O you who have believed. Save yourself and your families from the hellfire. This is the starting point. That every single Muslim, they will start from this point. Every single, every single father here, every single mother here will work on and focusing, protecting themselves from the hellfire. Establ establishing the fara'id, staying away from the haram, everything that displeases Allah Jalla wa ala, and those who are closest to them. Now imagine every single Muslim family doing that. As opposed to most of us looking at everybody else's home and looking far beyond our homes and leaving our own homes, metaphorically, under the fire. Unfortunately, too many people, too many Muslim families are looking beyond their own homes and not looking what is closest to them. If we start in this methodology, as Allah Jalla has told us, we will be, inshallah ta'ala, in a far better place than we are in at the moment. So how important it is for us to understand these important principles? To understand what these fitan are so we can avoid them. Starting at home with ourselves and our families and those who are beloved to us and then slowly working out. These principles will enable us, inshallah ta'ala, to gain strength in our communities, in our homes. Preventing the haram, which is really trying its best to enter our homes, to change our minds, our understanding of that what is good and that what is evil. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our shabab from those fitan, that what is apparent and that what is hidden.